One of the advantages of using R is that there's a large collection of external packages that you can download and install on your local system. These external packages extend R and give you access to more types of data, different analyses, um, different graphing methods. And in my last video, I showed you how to download and install packages from CRAN. So CRAN is the main R repository. CRAN holds releases and stable packages. However, if you wanted to install and download a package that is still in development, you wouldn't be able to get it from CRAN. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to download and install R packages from GitHub. The example that I'm going to use is my R Bedrock package. R Bedrock is an extension package for R that supports the analysis and management of Minecraft Bedrock Edition worlds. With R Bedrock, you can load data from an existing Minecraft world, you can analyze that data, you can modify that data, you can write those modifications back to your world. Unlike Chunkbase, R Bedrock is not going to take a seed and generate a world. Um, it only analyzes already existing worlds. But you can do a lot with that. With our bedrock, I've identified the locations of all the mob spawners in the world. I've clustered them to find clusters of mob spawners. I've identified structure spawns, predicted what's the best location to build fortress farms. I've searched for natural wither killers. I've created void worlds. I've created skyblock worlds. Um, I've modified biomes in a world. I've mapped out a world. So I've done all that with the help of our bedrock. So if you're interested in those things and you would like to install our bedrock on your machine, I'm about to show you how to do that. This is an update from my previous video for how to install our bedrock. Soon after I released that video, R 4.0 came out and that changed how you install libraries from source on Windows. And so this video is an update for how to do that. So installing our bedrock within R is pretty straightforward. If you're on Linux and you have the GCC tools installed or on Macintosh and you have the Xcode tools installed, our bedrock doesn't support installing on Macintosh right out of the box. There's a couple tricks to do that. Um, so if you really want to install this on Macintosh, please go into my Discord analyzing Minecraft and um, ask there. We've had people successfully install it on Macintosh with some very simple changes. Windows, it's a little trickier to get it installed, um, but I do have instructions on the website for our Bedrock on how to install it on Windows. I'm going to go over those now since I believe the majority of the users of our Bedrock will be on Windows. So I'm now in our studio. If you do not have our studio installed, I will link to my video on getting that set up on your computer. What I'm about to show you is how to install our Bedrock on a Windows system. It is also possible to install it on Linux and Macintosh. And so if you have any questions about that, um, please ask in the comments below or um, ask on my Discord. So we need to install a couple packages before we install our Bedrock. So if you're on Windows, the first package we're going to install is installer. And so the command to do that is going to be install packages installer, I-N-S-T-A-L-L-R. So that's the name of the package. So we're install that first. Installer is an R package made for Windows users and it helps install external programs through R. So we're gonna use it today to install R tools. R tools is the development environment for R packages on Windows. And we will need to install R tools before we can install R bedrock on Windows. Now, if you're not using Windows, you don't need installer, you don't need our tools. So if you're on Linux, you will need the normal uh, GCC and make tools. And if you are on Mac, you will need Xcode install. So now we're gonna use installer to install the R tools library. Command to that is installer, colon, colon, install dot URL. And we're going to paste the URL to the R tools uh, installation binary. HTTPS grand.r project org slash bin windows slash R tools slash R tools uh, 40 
dash x 8664.exe. So what this function is going to do is it's going to download the RTools installation binary from the web and then run it. And this is going to give us an environment locally that we can use to compile our bedrock. We'll press enter and it's going to show you a download message and then it'll show an installation process. So now the installation of our tools has completed and we're going to install our next package and this package is DevTools. Do install packages, DevTools. DevTools is an R package that works on Windows, Linux, and Mac and allows you to easily install developmental packages in R. We have to do one final thing before we can use our tools in our studio. This is going to be adding it to our path. So the command to do that is go is right lines path equals our tools 40 home double slash user USR double slash bin semicolon path. Con is equal to tilde slash dot R in Byron. This command is going to modify one of the configure files for R. And the result is that it will make R recognize that our tool that our tools has been installed. So then it can find it when we are installing a developmental package. And once that's done, we're going to restart our studio. Now that we've installed our tools, we've set up our tools and we've installed dev tools. We can now install our bedrock. The command to do this is dev tools colon colon install github and then read a cartwright slash r bedrock. Install github is going to download the source code for our bedrock from github and that's going to compile it locally using our tools and then it's going to install the package so that you can then load it in R. Before we test out if our bedrock is working, we're going to install one more set of packages. So this set of packages tidyverse. Oh, packages tidyverse. Tidyverse is a collection of packages that's really useful for analyzing data in R. To verify that our bedrock is working for us, we're going to do library tidyverse. So next, after tidyverse is all, we're going to do load our bedrock. So library our bedrock. So now that our bedrock's been loaded, we're going to test to see if it works, and we're going to do that by using list worlds. List worlds is a function provided by our bedrock and you can use it to list all the worlds that are found in the default world directory on your computer. So we, we can see on this computer, I have six worlds. And so we have the folder inside the world directory that this world lives, the name of the world and the last time it was opened. So today I've shown you how to install our bedrock on Windows. If you want to install it on Linux or Mac, it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below or join my Discord. I've also showed you how to install Tidyverse. So moving forward, most of the things I'm gonna show you how to use with our Bedrock are going to use Tidyverse. So make sure that you have both Tidyverse and our Bedrock installed and everything is loaded and working. Um, that's gonna be really useful moving forward. 
So be on the lookout for more videos. I hope to get out a video soon about how to identify the location of mob spawners in your world and how to do mob spawner clusters. That's a big request and kind of like almost the first thing I did with our bedrock. That's one of the reasons I wrote our bedrock was to find mob spawners. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions about using our bedrock, please join my Discord Analyzing Minecraft. The link will be in the comments below. I and some others are using it actively and there's always little tips and tricks and new things that get posted there first before it makes it to YouTube. I'm Rufus. I'd like to thank you for watching. Bye.